Hello, hello, and welcome to Blah Blah Black Sheep, a weekly yarny podcast where I, Sarah Korth of SEK Handmade, answer your yarny questions. You guys, today is a celebration, and can I confess that I wish I was feeling a little more celebratory, celebratory. <laughs> um, it's episode 52, which means technically a little over a year. I did finally go back and look to see when I released my first Blah Blah Black Sheep, and it was March 1st of last year, so that's funny. I did miss a couple weeks here and there for various personal reasons, but I've been working real hard to keep things moving because... Um, that consistency is important to me. I love doing this, and I'm always so bummed when my favorite podcasts don't release a new episode. <laughs> I don't want you to be bummed. I don't. So episode 52, we're slightly over a year. I had like, I'm going to be honest, I had like these big dreams of doing something like big and fun. I feel like I need confetti here, though the thought of cleaning up confetti makes me want to cry. <laughs> Um, so, <laughs> um, but guys, I've been tired. The start of this year was not what I thought it would be, not even in the slightest. And, um, and so I'm just tired. I'm just tired. My little one uh, hurt his foot. He, uh, okay, quick story. Last year, he bro broke his ankle. He was so convinced it was broken. He was just in immense pain. And so we took him to the doctor. They x-rayed it. X-rayed it. X-rayed it. Nothing was wrong. They gave him crutches anyways. He used them for approximately two seconds and then was like, I I'm embarrassed to use crutches. So we didn't use them. So this Friday night, Friday night, he was outside. Um, goofing around. I'm not going to go into that. Goofing around and like slipped his ankle off the curb and fell. And he, he heard it pretty bad this time. It swelled up to about the size of like a golf ball. Like he had a golf ball under his skin. It was, it was wild. He actually used the crutches this time, but I spent so much more time this weekend, like helping him get around and getting things for him. And he was up in the middle of the night and whew, that kid was an awesome sleeper when he was a baby and he has made up for it from the age of two to, you know, we're at nine now. Since then, he's not been great. <laughs> at this point, I would rather a baby who didn't sleep though at the time. I was very grateful that that chunky little boy slept like five hours right out the womb. I guess you could say maybe that's never stopped, but I just would expect that he'd be sleeping more now. <laughs> anyway, so I wanted to do a big celebration and then I, it just, life was too crazy. So I know you all are lovely, wonderful people and you'll appreciate that. So what I've decided to do as a little celebration is a little thank you for everyone who's watching. Mostly. I got it. I feel bad about this, but here's the thing. A while back, I got a bee in my bonnet that it would be fun to have. Um, I'm going to go grab them. It would be fun to have um, stickers. And it is. I love stickers. Stickers are so fun. Um, and so I ordered a bunch of stickers. And I've given some of them away to friends and to uh, other giveaway winners. But I thought, I have a bunch left. Because it turns out, <laughs> turns out I bought quite a few. So I have a bunch of different stickers left. They're just round stickers with blah, blah, black sheep on them. And um, I don't know why that's getting like all misty. Um, I suppose it's a little shiny. And then just some different fun sheep uh, or things on the sheep. So this one's kind of like a foresty one with teal around it. This guy is kind of just like a some leaves and it's like a deep eggplanty purple around it and then um 
this guy, which has the flowers and the hot pink. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. At first, I was like, I'm going to set up a thing where you put, you sign up for my emails, and then I'll send you this. And then I was like, no, no, I'm not going to make you do anything. I'm not going to make you give me anything. Here's what I would love for you to do. I'm going to put my email address down below. If you want a sticker, send me an email because I need your address to send it to. I would love to send them all over the world, but I can't afford that. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, I kind of know why. Um, mailing things from the United States is so expensive. But um, if you're in the U.S. or Canada, I will send one to you for totally free. I'll just send you a little, little card with a sticker in it. So you email me and say, hey, can I please have a sticker? Here's my address. Uh, I need your full name and your full address. And I'll say, yay, and I'll send you a sticker. Does that sound like fun? Um, I have these big dreams of creating like a series of blah, blah, black sheep patterns. And maybe I'll get to that by next year. Oh, I think I'm going to sneeze. I still have like the very lingerings on, like the dredges of my cold. Um, so I, I apologize if I sniffle or sneeze or cough because yuck. So I, anyways. That's how we're going to celebrate. Can you tell I'm tired? I'm very scattered. <laughs> so thank you for being here with me for a year plus 52 episodes. You all have been wonderful. I so enjoy making this podcast and it thrills me that you enjoy it as well. So thank you. Thank you. Let's dive into what we're going to talk about today. What I'm wearing. Friends, it's flurrying. I don't like it. So I said, I said last week though, right? Well, the, we're not done with winter and we, I was right. We were not done with winter. So today, because it's cold and yucky, I'm going big with one of my favorite colors and one of my favorite shawls. This is my Isadora shawl. Here's the thing. This was a project with Blue Sky and their maker program. And they are lovely and wonderful. I've talked about them before. So the first thing I did was I made this shawl. And in five colors, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five. I can count. In five colors. <laughs> and I loved it so much. And so I said to them, you know what I'd really love is to make it in just one solid color so people can see what that's like. Because not everybody likes stripes. And they were like, sure, here's some more yarn, which was so generous of them. And so then I made one in a, in a single color. That's what I'm trying to say. I made one in a single color. This is like, I don't know. The camera is not doing it justice. This is one of my, I, I'm obsessed with this colorway from them. And I'm obsessed with this deep, oh, that's not doing it any justice. It's much more purtier than that. It's just this gorgeous, deep, deep, it's more this color, uh, maroon with like all these little flecks of like navy. This appears to be a very solid, these, all of them, appear to be very solid colorways from a distance, but when you get up close to them, they're not solid. There's just little tiny variations. That's so wonderful. So this is the original Isadora shawl. It's one, it's a lot like my Lavana shawl in size. It's got a little less depth. The purpose of that being that if you are either a short person like me who doesn't have a lot of depth to their body or if you're a person who does not like bulk up around your neck, this depth is much more appealing. And then this shape, that's my crescent moon shape that really comes, you know, around, just wraps so nicely around the body. So it's just the easiest thing to wear. That was sloppy. <laughs> but I'm not going to wear either of my originals. Today I decided, will these land on the table? Ugh. Yay! <laughs> I decided I wanted my bold, um, my bold color here, because you know teal is one of my favorites, and um, this color was just amazing. So I got this um, yarn from Fatima of Aquarius Make, and um, 
this was a one of a kind colorway. She had three skeins of it. And I was like, yes, give me all of them. And so what I did was I continued the uh, texture of the shawl um, further. I just wanted to see how far could I get in three skeins? The answer, a very large shawl. <laughs> now, I did run out on um, for the edging. I ran out of yarn. But do you know what? I had just enough of the blue sky yarn left to do an edging on it and it really goes it coordinates surprisingly well together and then I was able to use up almost all of this yarn and almost all of this yarn which I love excuse me I'm sorry okay <clears throat> so for my super giant shawl and because it's super cold outside I'm gonna wrap up nice and tight so here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put this in the middle. You can see this comes like past my belly button because I'm a short little person. And then I'm just going to carefully wrap it around to the front. And then I'm going to take the other side and I'm going to try to keep it as flat as possible, carefully laying that around to the front. And then I'm going to do one of my most favorite shawl styles, styling, the way to wear it. I like it this way. So I take and I cross over, under, up, and through, like that. And then I take the shawl underneath, and I kind of pull it up. So it's almost like a little collar. So that's a little lower. And this is up a little higher. And I love that. It's going to keep me so cozy. So cozy. Love it. So Isadora shawl links are in the show notes links to yarn uh peoples are in the show notes so link to blue sky fibers i point over there because that's where i threw them um and then links to aquarius make uh you won't get this exact yarn but fatima has lots of beautiful yarns so um check her out and and that and that's what i'm wearing today <laughs> um what is bringing me joy? You guys, I am bizarrely caught up on my, one of my goals this year was to get ahead on my patterns so that I had plenty of time to do all the things and I wasn't rush, rush, rushing. And I think I've finally gotten there. I'm going to rush out, <laughs> rush out one more pattern this week, uh, tomorrow. So if you aren't a part of my mailing list and you're watching this on Wednesday, Thursday, a new spring shawl is coming out, and you should get on my email list because you've got the best, best discount code. <laughs> the best discount code. Um, so, yeah, that's happening. But after that, I'm like, I'm really ahead. Like, I'm to the point where I'm like, do I make more tester calls? Because if these don't come out for three months, should I test them already? I think the answer to that is yes. I just need to get the testing done because that's, I'm currently testing a pattern that I started a year ago and I, I hate it that I took so long to get it tested. It is really windy outside and I'm hearing noises. I think people's recycling bins are blowing over. Anyways, um, so the thing that is bringing me joy is I've decided to go ahead and work on some non-businessy things. Um, a lot of them are patterns <laughs> that I have already done, but they're not things that like had to get done. Actually, let me grab them. Um, three of the things that I pulled out three patterns here or three projects that I had sitting in project bags. Oh gosh. Try not to knock everything off of my table. Did I tell you last week that my table's a mess? It's not better this week. It's different, but not better. <laughs> so let's dig in here and see what I've been up to. Okay, so this is a skein of yarn that was in my mom's stash that I saw. I love, oop, I just dropped my hook. I love, I love a zauber ball. If you don't know what zauber balls are, they're these little color changing balls. It's a German company, I believe. Anyways, they make such fun projects because they do all the color changing work for you. So here's what I landed on. And I haven't worked on this in a while because I've been busy with other things and I've been debating if I want to change. And I think I've just decided, no, nope, I'm, go I'm, I'm going with it. 
So this is my, um, oh, for goodness sakes, Arlet cowl. And what I decided to do, so in the original pattern, what you do is you turn, it's worked in turned rows um, so that the stitches line up on top of each other. We can talk about why that's a problem sometime if you're curious. Uh, but for this one, I wanted to keep going in a continuous round so that it didn't mix up the color. It mixed up the colors as little as possible that they just laid in their order. And so what it's done, which I knew it was going to do this, is it's leaned all of those spike stitches uh, so they're crooked. And I just think it's fun. I just think it's fun. So my seam is, you know, my seam is crooked. My... Did I show you my seam side? Yeah, I actually did just show you the seam side. So this is the other side. You can see they go um, But I just think it's fun. And I'm just going to go until I run out of that ball of yarn and use it all up. And the bright colors are going to make me happy. And the fact that it was my mom's yarn is going to make me happy. The fact that she bought a rainbow <laughs> ball of yarn makes me laugh a little bit because I thought it kind of out of character for her. I wonder what she had planned on using it for. I don't know. So that's fun. And then um, I have my second Lumi shawl. Look how far I am, she said sarcastically. Um, but I really, I really love my rainbow Lumi shawl. And I know I'm going to love this one so much because, you know, I love that color. Um, this is uh, yarn from East Coast yarn. And, um, and I just want to keep plugging away at that. I want to take some intentional time every day to sit and crochet. Lately, I've spent a lot of time on my computer and I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Um, and then I have, this is actually, so uh, my Lavana shawl took me forever to figure out the shape. And this is actually the swatch that I was doing when I finally figured out the shape. And um, it is in, um, Madeline Tosh yarn that my mom bought me for a project I was going to do a really long time ago and then I didn't ever finish it and so I'm like I'm just going to make it into a shawl and so I'm a little ways into that and that's the same thing I just want to keep doing the pattern repeats until I run out of that yarn and use it you know mostly up and so I'm very excited to get back to those projects so that is what is bringing me joy um Small businesses, I am drinking from my Earth Love by Danny mug. Um, I will also link all of the um, small business yarns that I talked about there. Yeah, some of them are smaller than others, but um, so that you can find those if you would like to, um, to make a yarn purchase, because who doesn't love that? Um, and then I am wearing earrings from the place that I always screw up their name. Uh, Momente di Vita earrings. These are my super sparkly ones. Aren't those fun? Uh, I was like, what do you do to celebrate? You wear sparkly earrings. <laughs> so fun. Okay. Um, announcements. My sample maker form is up. I will link it below. Um, if you're, if you're new here, uh, one of my goals is to try to make local yarn shops more welcoming to crocheters. And one of the ways we're going to do that is we're going to provide a resource for local yarn shops of sample makers, uh, so that if a local yarn shop doesn't or can't, or doesn't have time to crochet, they can find some sample makers to make samples for their shops so that when people walk into their shop, they will see crochet and know that they're welcome there without even having to talk to people, which is lovely. So that's a Google form. You can go to the show notes, click on that, fill it out if you're interested in being a sample maker. If you have questions for me about what that entails, my email's down there. Shoot me an email. I'd love to chit chat with you about it. Local Yarn Shop Day is coming up. I'm very excited. I'm going to have a free pattern available through Local Yarn Shops just for Local Yarn Shop Day. If you have a local yarn shop 
that you would like me to reach out to so that my pattern gets offered there if they agree. Um, leave a comment below and I will go find an email and figure out how to contact them. Um, that's going to be a lot of fun. And then my last announcement is that the spring shawl along is coming up. We're going to start in April and it'll run the whole month. We'll have some fun prizes. We're just going to work on making shawls together because every spring, do you know what I need? A new shawl or two. <laughs> and so, um, I love crochet alongs. They, um, they really motivate me to finish things up, and I feel like shawls, especially if you're doing a big shawl like this, can uh, it can be easy to have momentum as you get started and then like peter out and never finish. So the shawl along is going to be motivation to uh, get a big project done. Um, Everyone is welcome with any pattern, any whips. I'm going to be working on a whip. I have a Cordelia shawl that I started last shawl along, I think, and I did not get very far. <laughs> like, literally, I think I got that far. Um, prizes will be available to people who work my shawls, but um, everyone is welcome. I do have a knit shawl, so if you're a knitter and you want to join in, you're welcome to join in with that shawl. So there you go. Um, yeah. How about we answer some questions? <laughs> it wouldn't be an episode without a few questions, right? Um, if you have a question, I would love to answer it. Please check out the link in the show notes below. It'll take you straight to where you need to answer your question. You just type in your question and we're good to go. Super simple. It's all anonymous, so you don't have to feel like, is this a silly question to ask? First of all, no, no, it's not. And second of all, uh, it's anonymous, so I don't know who's asking. So there you go. Sorry. Oh, my goodness. So many sniffles and snuffles. All right. Question number one. Alternating balls of yarn. Why and how? <laughs> I thought this was a great question. Um, so if you've seen somewhere, uh, whether it's a, a person talking about alternating skeins of yarn or it's a hand dyer who is recommending that you alternate skeins, um, you you might not know why. And here's the why. So Generally speaking, this is for hand dyed yarns um, or small batch yarns. You know, sometimes we don't think of some of those um, slightly larger companies as, as small businesses, but like this is a good idea for even like a Malabrigo. Um, so here's the thing <clears throat> we are people, not machines, right? <laughs> Do you feel like it comes down to this quite a bit? Because sometimes they do. We are people, not machines. And people, when people dye the yarn and not a machine. So when you're talking like a Lion brand yarn, where it's literally a machine dyeing the yarn, do you need to look at dye lots? Yes. Uh, I have an example of a tank top that I knit, actually, for a test. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I... I think I ran out of yarn, and so I got some more. I had purchased the yarn because it was pretty, and I didn't have a project for it. And then I started this project, and since it was a top, I needed more yarn than I had originally purchased. So I went back and repurchased. It wasn't the same dye lot. It, to me, as I was working with it, seemed the same. But then I took finished pictures for the designer, and you can see, you can see where, <laughs> where the new, uh, the incorrect dye lot was joined in. So if you are, even if you're buying commercially dyed yarn, I do recommend that you try to get uh, the same dye lot for a project. Um, but within that dye lot, you should be good to go. Dye lots mean all of that yarn was dyed together at once by a machine. Um, I mean, I guess hand dyed yarns can have lot numbers too, but if you're buying a big brand, Big box yarn, that's what that means. Now, 
as far as hand dyers go, whether it's, uh, you know, somebody who is just very starting their journey and has just is dying a few skeins at a time or someone bigger, I'm thinking, um, uh, maybe she comes to mind cause I was just wearing my Olivia cowl with her gorgeous hot pink yarn. Um, yesterday <laughs> brought me so much joy. Um, Hot yarn, hot knits. I think it's hot knits. She used to, uh, I honestly I haven't seen her stuff much recently, but she used to show her process and she would have like pans lined up and she, you know, put the yarn in them and she'd drop this color here and this color and then, you know, in all the pans and then come back and drop another color in all the pans and you know, so from person who ha is just starting out and has one pan to somebody who's a larger dyer and has lots of pans, but it's still just her dyeing all the yarn to something like a Malabrigo that I don't know what it looks like, but I imagine it's more than one person in a in a basement dyeing yarn. Um, all of those things that are physically hand dyed by people. Here's the situation. Yarn variations are a lot more frequent even within a single pan so the way most hand dyers will do it is they want to give you uh, skeins that are as close as possible so what they'll do is they will like you know have all the skeins from one pan if they dye in pans together and then if you order four you'll get them all from that same pan but Here's the thing, A, sometimes they can't exactly do that, and B, even within a dye pan, the way that the color lands on the yarn can be slightly different. This is not a problem, and this is not something that um, speaks to the quality of the dyer. It is just due to the fact that we're people and not machines. And so we don't like meh, 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 this exact same here and meh, 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 that exact same amount here. Um, <laughs> you, you know, you speckle and speckles are by nature chaotic. And so it happens. So because each skein catches the yarn and catches the yarn, catches the dye and absorbs the dye a little differently, even when people are as consistent as they can be. Um, the same same skeins in the same colorway are all slightly different. So why do they tell you to alternate skeins? Here is why. Because they're different, if you don't alternate skeins, you can end up with a really strongly, well, I guess it's for two reasons, I think. Um, you can end up with a really st visually strong um, difference. So actually, if you look at, I'm going to take it off again. If you look at the shawl that I'm wearing, this was hand dyed yarn. And I could see even as they were skeined up that they were different. Um, and so I tried to put them in almost a fade with the darkest color at the top and the lightest at the bottom. But can you see from the top, down to the bottom, how the amounts of light colors and purple change. There's not nearly as much purple in this top, and there's almost no really light spots. But as you go down, when I add the second skein in, which I'm going to guess is right around, you know, here ish, you can see there's more and more purple and there's more and more light spots. And then when you get down to the very bottom here, Look at how much more light there is in there than in here. It's just the nature of hand dyed yarn. Let me see if I can get myself adjusted here. Um, so I have another example for you here. Okay, I'm gonna try to be quick. Okay, so I noticed this as I was working my, my last project. <laughs> And I, I will confess, 
sometimes I don't alternate skeins and sometimes sometimes it turns out fine like I kind of planned this one that I knew I wasn't going to alternate the skeins I knew they were going to look a little different as you went down the shawl and I was fine with that this project I just was if I'm being honest I was being a little lazy I was teaching a class I didn't want to teach them how to alternate skeins. We were not at that level yet. And so I just started with one skein of yarn and I went to the other skein of yarn. So this is my Marin shawl. And I started with one skein of yarn and I you work from edge to edge. So I started down here, I worked across and then I changed skeins. Can you tell where I changed skeins? I can. <laughs> it's right here. Even without looking where my ends are, it's right here. Because do you see how this one is darker and this one has more pops of light? That has, this is, first of all, this is Sweet Pea and Sparrow yarn. Um, I think by the time this comes out, her new her um, new colorways will have launched so gorgeous yarn highly recommend look at that border ooh la la love it um this again there's nothing wrong with her dyeing techniques what i should have done because i know better is that i should have alternated i should have taken both of the skeins at once and i should have worked a couple rows alternating so that's why you do it. I I don't I don't think it's I mean obviously I finished the shawl. I would have had to rip all the way back to the beginning if I didn't. I don't think it's going to be that big a deal when you wrap it around. I don't think people are going to notice as I'm wearing it. Ah ah I'm caught. Gosh darn it. Should not have done that. Um I don't think people are going to notice as I'm wearing it. Oh gosh, I'm really caught here. <laughs> you guys Okay, taking the earring off. Um, so, so it doesn't bother it, it doesn't bother me for this project. Here's the how of avoiding that. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Are you kidding me? These earrings have a very pretty like hook on them, but because the uh, because the actual earring is so wide it catches more easily that was stupid of me i should not have attempted to wear two shawls at once okay so the way that you avoid that no i'm going to back up because i said there were two reasons right so the other reason that you might alternate skeins especially with a hand dyed yarn is that it can avoid it can help to avoid weird color pooling so oh oh it's up in my bedroom never mind so my um latent cowl that i just released i'll just put a picture up i had used this yarn for another project and i had not alternated skeins and it pooled very weird um <clears throat> now that all has to do with i have another episode about that uh, the, you know, the stitches and repeats and how big or small the circumference or width or whatever. But I had started another project with that. It had pooled weird. I hated it. And so when I decided to use that yarn for my latent cowl, I knew that I was going to alternate, um, skeins. So I had two skeins of it. I was going to alternate skeins to hopefully alleviate that color pooling. And between the alternating of skeins, the um, stitch pattern, which that stitch pattern does really well about mixing up um, the dyes in hand dyed yarn. It does, it shows it off really nicely and tends not to pull quite as strongly as some other stitches. Um, and then the fact that I alternated made it lay really nice and really random instead of in any kind of weird stripey pattern. So how, so the two reasons are to avoid strong changes between hand dyed skeins and to avoid weird color pooling. Uh-oh, there goes Weston. Um, so 
how do you avoid that? You avoid that by alternating skeins. And how do you alternate skeins? De depends on what you're working on. So if you're working on something that's in the round, Weston, I'm sorry, if he keeps barking, I'll pause. Hey, oh, here he comes, sir. Oh, okay, hey, 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 hey. Um, oh, I know. Oh, shh, 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 shh. Um, so if you're working something in the round, you can alternate every single round. So you can work around, you work with the two skeins at once, essentially. So you can work around your project in one skein and then switch and work around in the next skein and then you just alternate back and forth every single row if you are working flat you can't alternate every row because to do that you'd have to work across cut your yarn come back work with the second skein work across cut your yarn come back so for that you alternate every two rows so you're going to work down and back pick up your new yarn, work down and back, pick up your new yarn, work down and back. And then you're just going to carry that yarn, the skein you're not using, up your project. So if you are working in the round, that's super easy. You just carry it up uh, on the inside, which I just carefully as I change color, make sure I have enough slack in that yarn that once I block the project, it won't... Um, it won't cinch it in. That's something you want to be careful about. But then if I'm working, alternating every two rows in a flat, then you just kind of carry it up the side. And you can either, you can, you can decide for yourself. You can kind of like um, tuck it in as you go up so that it, uh, there aren't big like, dude, I just brushed you last night. There aren't big swooping uh, loops for loops of yarn that go up the side um but you just that's kind of a personal preference you can see along the edge um you know which on a shawl it wouldn't be this edge it would be the top edge uh you can see does it bother you is it really obvious are you worried if it's going to get caught on something the other thing to think about then if it's on the edge is might it be He's really panting. Might it be a good idea then to work some sort of simple border, even like a single crochet border over the edges to kind of trap those um, in there and um, and hide them a little bit and keep them from snagging on things. So um, all of those are things. Yes. Good to see you, too. Hi. All of those are things you can decide on as you work. So. Um, so there you go. That's the why and how of alternating balls of yarn. Yeah, why don't you lay down? Um, and there you go. Uh, if you have any questions about anything I said, or if you have suggestions as a yarn lover yourself, I'd love to hear them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Whew. Okay. Question number two. <laughs> I started work on a new pattern and I am so frustrated. My stitches don't look like the pattern. What's going on? Okay. So first of all, I want to say, if this is my pattern, email me. <laughs> you didn't specifically say it was one of my patterns. So I would assume maybe not, which if you're a, a, a viewer, a watcher, a, a black sheeper, <laughs> And you have a question like that that's not about my patterns, that's totally fine. If we're not, we are all inclusive here. If you have a knitting question uh, and you want to ask me, let me know. I do knit. And actually, this lovely new knitter sat down next to me at um, Yarny Social Time at my local yarn shop. And I was able to help her with a few things, which was so fun. So fun. Um... So if it's one of my patterns, I want you to talk to me. If you find a mistake or you have a question about one of my patterns, I want to talk to you. Um, I'm here to help. So I have come up with in my brain three things, three general things that it could be. The first thing is it could be a you problem. 
don't take offense to that. Not like a, you're a dum dumb, but like it happens to the best of us. We're people. So here's an issue. Here are issues that I could think of that, that might be you caused. <laughs> One, did you miss something in the instructions? So if there are instructions for the stitches, um, no, you can't go that way. The door's shut. He can't see that. He's going to go run into the door anyways. Um, <laughs> um, in the greater pattern, did you miss something? Are you skipping a row? Are, were you not skipping a stitch or something? Sometimes our brain... Sometimes our brains are funny and sometimes we can think we know what's going on without even consciously thinking, oh, I know what this is. And that, that assumption that we know uh, causes us to skip over a detail that mucks things up that we don't know. We don't know. <laughs> we just thought we did. So the first thing I would do is go back and reread the pattern really carefully. If there are special stitches listed, I would practice those special stitches going very slowly to, um, to make sure you're catching all of the instructions. Sometimes my brain gets ahead of me when I'm reading instructions and I will like, Oh, skip that I was supposed to yarn over and just pull through one loop and instead I just like completed the half double crochet well that's not how you make that stitch you know um so I would really carefully um go over the instructions now I also don't know how experienced a crafter you are and I don't know if you are self-taught or if you took a class but something else I have found to be uh, the two kind of just like real general things that I have found to be an issue with fabric looking the way it's supposed to from teaching very new crocheters are these two things. One, tension. So often very new crocheters will look at my fabric and be like, well, mine doesn't look like yours. Well, of course it doesn't. You're still very, very learning. And tension. So specifically keeping an even tension um, really affects how your fabric looks. You know, even if you're making single crochet stitches, if one is big and small and medium and small and big and, you know, <clears throat> your fabric doesn't look nice and smooth like somebody who has really good tension. That's really like all the stitches are super consistent. So whether you aren't an experienced crocheter and you haven't mastered your tension yet, or you are an experienced crocheter, but maybe these new stitches and combinations, especially if you're getting stressed about the fact that it's not working, um, are could be mucking up your tension. So pay attention to your tension. <laughs> um, the other thing is yarning over versus yarning under. I find this a lot in self-taught crocheters. People will come. I encourage people who are self-taught to come take my learn to crochet class. They usually fly right through it because generally speaking, they know what they're talking about because they have some experience. But quite often, I find that they're doing something a little wrong. And Sometimes it is yarning under versus yarning over. This is not something I can really demonstrate here, but I do have a video on it, and so I will link that below. This is something that, um, here's, here's the deal. I'm just going to mm -mm, pat myself on the back a little bit. One of the reasons I'm a really good teacher is because of those little tiny details. I pay close attention and I want to explain to you those things. Most people, um, not that they're not fine teachers, but they don't really specify those things in their, um, in their videos. And so you can be yarning under the whole time and never even know that there was a difference between yarning over and yarning under. And one of the, I always say in my classes that some things are personal preference and some things are not personal preference. Something that is not personal preference is yarning under versus yarning over. It will 
form your stitches differently and they will look different. So check that video out and see. The other thing that it could be is it could be a designer problem. Oh, for goodness sakes, friend, it's windy out. Maybe he's hearing uh, recycling bins fall over too. Um, okay, it could be a designer problem. The stitches could be poorly plain, explained, poor, poorly planned, poorly explained. Um, it could be that the pattern is actually missing something. Not all designers get their patterns tested and tech edited. Um, just right now, I have a pattern in testing and in the notes, I say all of these kinds of stitches are worked two rows before. Well, I have a different section. They're not worked two rows below. They're only worked one row below. And my tester was like, so, huh? And I was like, yes, my brain, I just like did it because I knew what I wanted, but I didn't explain it to anybody. So it wasn't working out for her. <laughs> this is why we test. This is why we tech edit to get our patterns as error free as possible. That is something that I value and is very important to me. That is not something that all designers value or find important. So if they haven't had people test them and they haven't been tech edited, they could be missing a major instruction that makes the stitches look correct. Um, The other thing is, if a, if a designer is not having other people look at their patterns, they could, they could be using wrong terminology, I guess, would be, I don't know. I don't really know a nice way to say this, um, but, but I think it's important to know and to understand. I tell all of my Learn to Crochet classes that the most amazing thing is that people can self-publish, but also the most dangerous thing is that people can self-publish. It's awesome because there's no gatekeeping about what good patterns are or what deserves to be published. So, um, you know, Amigurumi is huge. If Vogue had forever been in charge of who gets published, I don't think we ever would have had the explosion of Amigurumi we have. Uh, because they're a fashion design. So they're all accessories and clothes and stuff. So, you know, but the downside of that is that any person who has the confidence to can publish a pattern. They don't have to meet a standard. It doesn't have to be written in any sort of way, which when there were gatekeepers, there were standards that had to be met. Um, so... It could be that this person doesn't know what they're talking about. Um, it could be um, that this person is just making stuff up. All of it is possible. And I've seen it all. <laughs> um, and that's hard and that's frustrating for you as a consumer of patterns because how do you know what's right? Sometimes you just don't. Um, we can talk about how to find better patterns another time. Um, <clears throat> so then, okay, so my third thing, I'm, I'm talking real long here, so I'm going to try to wrap this up. The third thing is that it could be a time problem. So um, it is really easy to get started on a project and have just like this littlest amount worked and be like, ah, it's not working. Sometimes certain stitch patterns just take longer to kind of reveal themselves. Um, whether it's just something that you don't really see the stitch pattern until um, until you have some of the fabric worked. Um, the uh, cross single crochet is something that I think is gorgeous, but it's one of those things that every time I start it, I'm like, it doesn't look right. Well, it just takes like, a, you know, you need like a couple inches of fabric before the pattern really starts to like, ah, come forward. Um, or things like the Bavarian stitch or certain like lace stitches, like they, 
last over multiple rows. And so you doing a row of it when it's a four row repeat, it's not going to look right on the first or second row. You've got to get all the way through the repeats before it's going to look correct. So good luck. It's frustrating to pick up a pattern and not have it work and not know why uh, it's not working. Um, reach out to somebody else. <laughs> that sounded terrible. Reach out to somebody else. No, but if you can find someone that you can meet with in person <laughs> and you can both look it over, maybe they can catch like, oh, you're not doing this step or um, they just have some sort of knowledge that that will like click everything into place that you didn't personally have. Um, even, even if you're an experienced crocheter, people write patterns differently in different styles. So having somebody else look at it with you can really be helpful. Even if it's not a, a yarn professional, you know, it's just like Mildred at church who's been crocheting for, you know, 60 years. Mildred's done some stuff. She knows. She's she's been around. Maybe she can help. <laughs> maybe not, but it's worth a try. And then maybe you'll like bud a little relationship with Mildred. Who knows? So there you go. <laughs> Friends, episode 52, one year. I've talked more than my fair share. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed it. As always, I've enjoyed so much being here with you. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to email me if you would like a sticker. I'd love to send a whole bunch of those out and, and maybe I'll sign a new sticker or something. So thank you so much for joining me and happy crafting. <laughs> <laughs>